Welcome back. The SGX Nifty is indicating a gap up. Now keep in mind, uh, 17,033, it's expiry day. The dollar index is once again retreating, and climbing a bit uh, after the uh, overnight action. Overnight you saw uh, quite a bit of uh, knee jerk, uh, right? Uh, and now again, perhaps some more measured response. Uh, the, even the US futures are a bit more measured. So we'll see how things move. Today's expiry as well. So let's see if the 17,000 call writer panics or, you know, holds on. Uh, that I think will be the first uh, sort of... Uh, point to discuss. Uh, Rajesh Bhatia is joining us now. He's MD and CIO at ITI Longshot Equity Fund. Rajesh, hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, your kind of market, right? Uh, a bit of long, bit of short and, uh, you know, you can uh, outperform the market. Uh, how are you approaching it? Yeah, uh, certainly our kind of market, uh, especially when it declines, uh, that's the uh, advantage that we bring at Longshot uh, Equity Funds. Uh, see, I think the market, uh, uh, as far as India is concerned, I think there is a bit of a tug of war between bull and bears, right, for the last one year. I think what is happening is that while the micro story of India is extremely strong, there is fragility at the macro end. While there is a great structural multi-year thesis for India, it is getting bogged down by global events which can hurt the cyclicality in the shorter term. So basically, the market is in a liquid oxygen phase, right? The opportunity for multi-years, uh, uh, India opportunity, uh, given the global context and given our structure, doesn't allow the market to go down too much. But given the overwhelming negativity that is there in the global markets, doesn't allow the markets to go up. So the last one year, the market has just been caught within these two optimism versus pessimism. And I think that's the, that's the uh, uh, phase that we are going through. Having said that, I think the recent developments have been a little more interesting because uh, my sense is that what has come off this time is the cyclical stocks. You could argue that the cyclical stocks like auto, banking, real estate, etc. had also done well. But I think the severity of the fall is noteworthy because it is. it would be fair to assume that the market is certainly apprehensive of a cyclical challenge in India. Uh, we will see how that evolves given, you know, how much negative the sentiment is globally. Uh, but I think that is something that is interesting to watch, whether the market is coming to grips with the cyclical challenge of India in the shorter term. Rajesh, uh, that uh, liquid oxygen, you could have <laughs> you know, said it in dialogue form. It would have been more... Ajit style, right? And I think Anybody in, wants in our market... Anybody our, wants to go for it between the two of you? Yeah, I mean, of course, in, in our market, you would say that, you know, crude is a girne nahi dega and dollar is a badne nahi dega. I think that was the one which was going to be allowed. But I think uh, it's, it, uh, he put it very well, yeah. Rajesh, that uh, longer term uh, story doesn't let you kind of uh, fall, but there are over, overwhelming negatives. But in the margin... Uh, what I mean, it's all about incremental uh, buying or selling, right? So, right. What, which impulse is stronger according to you, Rajesh, and where does that uh, take us, in your opinion, near term? So, one of, I'm not really a technical analyst, you know, uh, head and shoulders is a shampoo for me. But, uh, you know, I think what is interesting to observe is that since the peak of October, we have been going through a phase of lower tops and lower bottoms. I mean, uh, you know, a pure technical analyst may argue that that's not true. But in my opinion, when I look at the price action, it is still a phase of lower tops and lower bottoms. And my sense is that I think, uh, you know, while there is optimism in the short term, like I said, I think there is certainly concern that we are a fragile uh, economy on a macro basis. Uh, look at our current account deficit. It's probably over 4% as we speak. Uh, our fiscal uh, uh, budget is probably six and a half. We have used all our bullets. And you know, you can see if you try and exceed that, uh, what happens uh, uh, given the case of the U UK, where they try to stimulate the economy further, and you can see the, the effect on the bond market and the currency market. So we certainly don't have a developed market status, uh, 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 you know, uh, a thing. So basically, we have to be very careful of the ability to stimulate our economy. So given the global context that it is slowing down, it's going to slow down starting uh, from exports, uh, which is already weak for us, and it is going to lead to a slowdown in our economy. Read that as e EPS cuts. Hmm. At the same time, cost of capital is going up. I mean, if two-year treasury in the U.S. is giving you 4 to 5 percent, that's risk-free 4 to 5 percent. Then you have a hurdle of the de depreciation of the currency. Then you have equity risk. 
So the hurdle rates for equities are certainly going up. Hmm. So I would certainly consider all of those inputs. Okay. You know, at the end of the day, I guess the question boils down to what do I do with my portfolio, right? There's already been a drawdown of about 10-15% overall and then worse in, in the broader markets. Do you move to cash? Do you keep some powder dry? What's the approach now? See, I can speak as a long term, long short equity fund because anybody who is a long term investor should be invested in India. I, I don't think there's any you know question about that. Uh, and especially, I think you uh, I don't know how many people can really time the markets in that sense. But as a long short uh, equity investor, uh, we are tactically at the moment cautious uh, uh, as to you know how this scenario is evolving. Hmm. Okay, uh, you know I want you to just stay on for a bit 